Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption didst give thine only begotten Son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection hast delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through the same thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be attentive to the proclamation of God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism, baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. He, we are witnesses to all of that. He did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God 
as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he, was, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, to proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and took in and saw the lin- and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who reached the tomb first, also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scriptures that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said, had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher, Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he, that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you to thee. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The gospel reading that we just heard proclaims the most revolutionary, most important, and most fundamental truth of all creation. And it begs the question then, of how can we as Christians communicate that truth? How do we preach so weighty a topic as the resurrection of our Lord? My favorite sermon is one that I've read several times and which never fails to move me when I hear it. It's a sermon that is punchy and to the point, clear and concise. And more importantly, it's a sermon that you know with absolute certainty comes from Christ in a way that anyone who approaches the pulpit hopes and prays that their message will be from Christ and not simply themselves. It's also short, and let's not kid ourselves, that really helps. (laughs) It will forever be the most powerful sermon to me because it proclaims a truth that shatters the world, not changes the world, but shatters it. It's a sermon I know you're all familiar with, but I want to preach it to you now. I have seen the Lord. 
This is the first and greatest Easter sermon preached to the apostles by St. Mary Magdalene at the command of Christ himself. In five words, the apostle to the apostle turns the world on its head by proclaiming the truth of the resurrection joy. The sermon is about more than simply that, though. You see, the sermon that is recorded in Scripture isn't fully complete. John's Gospel says that she also relayed to the apostles everything that Jesus had told her. The immediate inclination is to view that as solely being a reference to Christ's instructions to tell the apostles what he had said. I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. But there is a very profound truth that Christ speaks to Mary before this. When Mary arrives at the tomb, she arrives in desolation and death. She and the disciples didn't understand what had happened. And they arrived thinking that the Lord was dead and buried in the tomb, that everything that he had said had been for naught. This is not how it was supposed to go. When she arrives in the gospel text, she is described using the Greek version of her name, Maria. In St. Mark's account of the resurrection, it makes specific reference to how when St. Mary and the other women arrived at the tomb, they had wondered, how are we going to deal with this giant stone door that they have rolled in front of this cave to seal the tomb? We could think about this as arriving with the oppression of the gates of Hades, the power of sin and death made manifest blocking the tomb. But in the victory of Christ, in the power of Christ, and in the world-shattering resurrection of Christ, the power of hell, the gates of hell, cannot contain him. The stone had been removed. In St. Luke's encounter with the resurrected Christ on the road to Emmaus, Christ is made known in the breaking of bread. Here... St. Mary's eyes are opened by one word, Meriam. Our Lord uses not the Greek, but the Aramaic form of her name. It's not the name she would have necessarily been known by around town. Many of her interactions would have used the Greek, which was the common language of the people brought in by the Roman occupiers at that time. She may have been speaking Greek before when she addressed the gardener or who she supposed to be the gardener because the text emphasizes the fact that when our Lord speaks to her and says her name, she responds in Hebrew, Rabunai. It had made no such comments previously. Christ names her in her first language, the language her parents had taught her, the language she had grown up with. He's using what has become a name of intimacy, a name that conveys the deepest of parental relationships with her, one of comfort, care, and love. Now, in the way that God is Christ's father, God will be Mary's father. He will be our father. Now, as he is Christ's God, He is Mary's God, and he is our God. In the Old Testament, the relationship between God and Israel is frequently stated by God as, I will be your God, and you will be my people. Christ tells us that because of the resurrection, this is not the case anymore. Now God will be our God, and we will be not just his people, but his children. When you were young, Did you have someone in your life who loved you and expressed that love for you with some kind of pet name, a name that only they used for you? Are you married? Do you have a special name for your spouse that expresses your love for them? Maybe you never have and it's just something that you long for. 
Mary Magdalene here proclaims that the creator and sustainer of the universe, Almighty God, calls each and every one of us by name. Not just a name that we were given at birth by our parents, but a name that is given to express his love and intimacy for each and every one of us. Think about that for a second. God loves you. He didn't need to sacrifice his son for you. He did it because he loves you. That is radical and profound and world-shattering. In a very tongue-in-cheek way, a priest friend of mine made a list for an online article of 15 ways to stay bored in church. <laughs> I think the, the top way to stay bored in church is to refuse to believe any of it. Actual belief is the most difficult obstacle to casual Christianity. C.S. Lewis tackles the same challenge, putting it this way, Christianity, if false, is of no importance, and if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. Chapter 20 of John's Gospel is perhaps the heart of the Gospel a world-shattering truth that proclaims death has been defeated and the way of eternal life has been opened to each and every one of us. As C.S. Lewis puts it, this is of infinite importance. The heart is not limited to the world-shattering news of God's love for us in the resurrection, but it also finds the heart of the gospel finds itself in Christ's command to tell others. The first commandment of Christ after his resurrection is for Mary to tell others about him. He has done all the hard work conquering death. He's left us with the responsibility of sharing this wonderful news with others. It takes nine words to ask, would you like to come to church with me? It took St. Mary five words to proclaim the most profound truth of our existence. And it should take us no words at all to proclaim through our lives that Christ Jesus, resurrected and ascended, conqueror of sin and death, makes the most profound difference in our lives. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess thy name may be united in thy truth, live together in thy love, and reveal thy glory in the world. Remember Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our primate, and all the primates of the Anglican Communion. Justin, our bishop, Matthew, our rector, Janet, our deacon, Dan, thine aspirant, and all those who serve thee in thy holy Catholic Church. We pray especially for Wesley Dubik, our supported seminarian, as he is formed for ministry at Neshota House, and for Dennis and Margaret, as they are formed for ministry here in our parish. In our diocese, we remember especially the Church of the Holy Apostles in Satellite Beach and St. Elizabeth's Church in Sebastian. Lord, in thy mercy, Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Remember Joseph, the president, Ronald, our governor, and all those who hold civic authority and grant them wisdom and strength to do thy will. Lord, in thy mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as thine own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to thine honor and glory. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Remember those organizations whose mission it is to feed the hungry and house the homeless as well as for all first responders and medical professionals who labor for our safety and well-being. In our own beloved parish, we remember these families, Kathy Easter, Jeff and Margaret Emerson, Morgan Emerson, Dottie Fetro, Evelyn and Jerry Fields, Jack and Wendy Gieslin, Janet Gazelt, and we give thanks for Matt Cook, Patricia Alexander, Cliff Martin, as they celebrate their birthdays. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of thy salvation. Remember those for whom we are asked to pray, especially Eduardo Colazzo, Dennis Hartenstein, Tom and Jane Reach, Kyle King, Heather Perot, Ruth Paulzak, and Caroline Studer. We now pause for a moment to pray silently or out loud for all those who are on our hearts. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to thy mercy all who have died, especially Ralph White Jr. and Tim Riley, that, they will, that thy will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Thomas our patron, and all thy saints in thine eternal kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, Mighty Father, 
who through thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, has overcome death and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life. We beseech thee mercifully to incline thine ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplications unto thee and grant that those things which we have asked faithfully according to thy will may be obtained effectually to the relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of thy glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ye that do truly and <clears throat> earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised the forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all whom truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. I invite you to please stand. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome this morning to St. Thomas Episcopal Church for this celebration of the Mass for Easter Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord. We especially want to welcome guests who are joining with us this week. Please help us to better connect with you by filling out a contact card in the pew in front of you and placing that in the offering plate when they are passed around in just a few moments. My name is Father Matthew Perot, and I'm the rector here. And if you can't tell, I'm a little sick. So... <laughs> Um, but it's, it's, we're, we're getting through things so far. I was, I was worried at one point that this would be like the old style masses where you never heard the priest because he was saying everything silently. Um, but, but we're, we're making it. So, uh, just a few quick community announcements. First and foremost, there will be a free brunch in the parish hall after mass today. So I encourage everyone to please attend that and share some fellowship and some fun food. I don't know if I can fit another F in there. But anyway, um, do, do please attend. We'd love to have everyone join us there. Uh, the church office will be closed tomorrow. Um, if there are uh, any pastoral emergencies, you can still call the church office and then push one, and that gets you through to me. Um, we have coming up next Saturday 
our next uh, breakfast feeding ministry opportunity. If anyone would like to volunteer and find out more about how we serve the people in our community who do not have a regular breakfast, um, you can show up at around 7.30 a.m. at the parish, and this is uh, open to anyone, so if you happen to be in the area and need a hot breakfast, just pop by the parish hall. That's fine, too. Uh, our Christian formation class will not meet tomorrow. I'm going to take a little bit of time off and hope that my voice recovers. Um, so we will meet on Monday the 8th next uh, here in the church at 3 p.m. and we will be discussing the sacrament of holy matrimony. We have a community dinner coming up on the 14th, uh, Sunday the 14th of April at 6 p.m. in the parish hall and it will be sort of Easter themed food there. So I think turkey and ham and, and the like. Um, do mark your calendars for that. Um, I also want to make note of, again, the upcoming concert that we have on the 26th, Friday the 26th of April. I believe it is at 4 p.m. in the parish hall. We have a number of current and retired professors of music from Davidson College and Rollins College coming to do a performance piano and trumpet. Um, I've seen I don't remember off the top of my head right now because it got sent to me right in Holy Week, but I've seen the program for the evening and it looks like it is going to be wonderful. So I would encourage you to think about attending that, mark your calendars. There are um, handouts available at the back of the church uh, for the concert as well as for the community dinner if anyone wants to grab one. Um, of course, they're printed in your booklets as well. Lastly, I just want to express my personal thanks to everyone who has contributed in ways great and small this week. Um, not the least, of course, our choir who has spent quite a bit of time practicing, um, but there have been so many people who have contributed to um, making all of Holy Week happen this week, and we've had so many people come up to me afterwards to say it's been so wonderful, and that's not because of me, that's because of everyone coming together to do this. So thank you all for that. Um, this has been wonderful, my voice notwithstanding. Um, those are all the announcements I have for today. Thank you. So, because I can't quite do this, there are some portions of the service that indicate that I will sing them. I will sing them on a monotone. You guys can respond like normal. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor to the Lord.
The holy sacrifice this Mass is offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God and with special prayer and intention and thanksgiving for the love of God shown in the resurrection of Christ Jesus our Lord and for all the intentions that are listed in your bulletins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is, <clears throat> it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death and by his rising to life again hath won for us an everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. 
And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness and in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.
Bless, O Lord, the food we are about to eat to our bodies, ourselves to thy service, and keep us ever mindful of those who go without and provide for all their needs through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 